chapter 13, part 7. We're going to look at the word en and the many uses that it can have. We're going to start off with probably the most difficult use of the word en as a pronoun. And we call it a prepositional object pronoun because it replaces a prepositional phrase. Remember earlier I talked about, I called them strange object pronouns, en and then e, uh, spelled with a, like a Y. Well, we're going to look at the en in more detail now. So en, when it's used as a pronoun, is it's a pronoun that replaces an expression starting with de. Now, often it's translated of it or of them. For example, nous avons besoin d'argent. We have need of money. So we translate this, we need some money. And the d'argent is a de contracted, and so we uh, replace that with the word en and put it in the pronoun position in front of the conjugated verb. Nous en avons besoin. We have need of it or of some, or even better, we need some. So that's how it basically works. It replaces the D prepositional phrase and puts it in front of the verb. Ces princesses n'ont pas de royaume. These princesses don't have kingdoms. And so we have a de royaume. That's the negative form of the uh, indefinite article. And so the de royaume gets replaced by un. Ces princesses n'ont pas. No, there's no liaison there, sorry. Ces princesses n'en ont pas. These princesses don't have any. So the these princesses do not have avoir um, of them or any would be a better translation. These princesses don't have any. Ils ne sont pas, ca, ils ne sont pas capables de réfléchir. So, ils ne sont pas capables, they are not capable of thinking. Ooh, somebody doesn't like somebody. So, this, this insult here, if we want to put de réfléchir in, with, replace it with a pronoun, we'd replace it with en and put it in front of the verb. Ils n'en sont pas capables, and the ne and the pa go around the conjugated verb and the pronouns like they have before. This means they're not capable of it or they're not capable of doing it. Re referring it referring to of thinking. J'achète trois pains. I buy three loaves. Now pain is a, a general word for a loaf of bread or it can be a specific size loaf of bread. A baguette weighs 250 grams and a pan weighs 400 grams. So I buy three loaves or I buy three uh, uh, large baguettes because they're the same shape as baguettes, pretty much. We can, when we have a number followed by a noun, we can replace the noun with en. J'en achète trois. So that means I buy three of them. So whenever you have, uh, you can't just say j'achète trois, I buy three. You always have to have the en there. I buy three of them. Oops. Il a parlé de tous ses amis. So, a parlé de, so to talk about. So, he talked about all his friends. So, we've got the expression de tous ses amis, about all of his friends. We can replace with en, il en a parlé, meaning he talked about them. Now, let's change gears and use talk about other uses of en. The easiest one is when it means the word in, like il habite en France. He, he lives in France. Il habite en Egypte. He lives in Egypt. But not all countries take en. Some take a or o, depending on their gender, depending on whether they start with a vowel, things like that. We don't need to learn those rules. We just need to be aware that um, the preposition used to introduce a country is en or something in the a family. Sometimes en means as a, like il parle en professeur. He speaks as a professor in his profes professional role of a professor. 
There's also a lot of expressions with en. En plus de means in addition to. En outre de means besides or in addition to, moreover. En face de means opposite, facing, or in front of. Like en face d'un bâtiment, uh, bâtiment means you're saying in front of a building, in front of the building. En tant que, that means as or in the capacity of. Um, en raison de means because of. So these are pretty common expressions and are worth memorizing. So here are some exercises using many different varieties or many different usages of en. When you've written down your responses, check them on the next video.